Hey guys, this is Dr. Daniel Sigai, board certified dermatologist. I wanted to talk about SPF testing and UVA, UVB uh, differences and uh, just wanted to kind of go over it uh, in a comprehensive way so that we all can learn from each other and understand uh, what SPF really means. And I know it's just more towards the uh, the Purito controversy. And like I said before, if that's our biggest controversy we're dealing with right now, I think we're doing okay, guys. But I am feeling for those of you who have unopened boxes of Purito sunscreen. I know it was really popular and um, the people who initially want to investigate the truth behind it, they were qu scratching their heads wondering, how did they achieve SPF 50 plus and a PA 4 plus system with just two UV filters at, at fairly low, relatively low percentages? Let's go through the different UV UV rays that we are exposed to. Let's start off with UVA. UVA is of the longest wavelength on the UV spectrum. UVA is a, uh, can be broken down to UVA1 and UVA2. UVA2 being a shorter wavelength, mean, being more towards UVB. And uh, UVA1 and 2 are uh, longer wavelengths, so they penetrate our skin deeper. So they affect the collagen more readily than UVB, and thus it causes aging thinner skin, solar elastosis, dermatoheliosis, those are signs of sun damage. And when if you biopsy skin that has solar damage, solar elastosis, I'll show a little histopaths um, image here, you know, we get excess bruising that's very easily set off by just minor trauma. We get brown spots, red spots, white spots, and that's the definition of poikiloderma, which is another uh, manifestation of sun damage. And so UVA, uh, is used by tanning boots, which I never recommend tanning for any reason. There's no such thing as a good tan. And um, UVA is effective at causing tanning, um, not for everyone, but for um, people, you know, uh, phototypes two, especially three, four and up. And UVA still can contribute to skin cancer, like UVB, which when I was in residency, we always thought of UVB as UV burn. UV bad because it really uh, adds to DNA damage and thus uh, progresses to skin cancer like melanoma, which is the most fatal skin cancer alongside uh, Merkel cell carcinoma, which is a very aggressive skin cancer as well, also thought to be related to sun damage. So if you do look at UVA, it's in its own special category. Zinc oxide is a great physical blocker that will filter out, um, take the hit from UVA one and two, very well, but also cover UVB. So UVB is another uh, ray that we're very much exposed to, uh, especially in the summertime when there's a lot of sun coming through. It's not a very cloudy day. Um, clouds can filter out UVB. Your window glass can filter out UVB, but not so much UVA. And that's why I made a TikTok the other day that you should wear sunscreen in the car because a lot of my American patients have more photo aging skin cancers on the left side of their face, whereas my UK or Aus Australian patients might have more sun damage on the right side of their face uh, and I see that in clinic very much so um, and also left arm right arm if you're on the truck driver side left arm outside the window definitely get a lot more sun damage there but if you're um, UVB wise you don't get a much you don't get as much UVB exposure when you're indoors by a window pane um, or in your car UVB is like we said UV burn and so when we test for SPF we do use UVB energy not UVA because we want to look at erythema, the burn. So we look at skin that's not protected versus skin that's protected with sunscreen. And that's with uh, in vivo studies, being that it is taking place in a live organism, so a human subject. And it usually involves 10 subjects, 10 to 15 subjects, and it involves a lot of time because it can span for multiple days, multiple, um, you know, treatments of light on the lower back, say, sometimes they do inner arm, but a lot of time it's like the lower back near the buttocks. And they're trying to measure how much UVB energy they're shining on your skin and what period of time before you start getting erythema or redness, erythema being redness. And that's what UVB does, burns. So uh, you're looking at the MED or the minimal erythema dose for unprotected and protected skin to come up with your SPF. And that's how this 
most recent studies on Purito sunscreen, their mean SPF was 19, which is way less than the SPF that us dermatologists usually recommend, which is 30 and above by looking at this SPF curve that I put up above, I do in my, my other videos, that there is a plateau as, after SPF 30. And so we say, try to hit 30 as much as possible and try to reapply every two hours and wear enough sunscreen as well, because regardless of what SPF you're using, it's still gonna be the same rules wear half teaspoon amount of sunscreen to your face and neck and if you went outside with your body exposed definitely wear a shot glass amount to your body and also reapply every two hours whether you're using spf 30 or 100 you want to reapply every two hours um, because in the real world setting our sunscreen won't last for um, the x amount of time that theoretically your spf is covering you for so say you have spf 30 and it takes you 10 minutes to get a burn that means you have coverage, theoretical coverage, in the laboratory setting for 300 minutes, right? So 10 times 30, 30 times the amount of time you usually take to burn without sunscreen is your um, is what SPF is talking about. But in terms of that, I won't don't even look at that time. You wanted to say, regardless of it, you're wearing an SPF 30, 50, or 100, you're going to reapply every two hours. You're going to be sweating. You're going to be, you know, all these uh, the sun the sun will deactivate your your sunscreen. There's in vitro studies as well. In vitro meaning outside of the body, artificial. You guys hear about that a lot more, especially in fertility treatments. In terms of in vitro studies for SPF testing, you're using strips and in um, putting uh, UVB energy onto it. And I have a picture of how it looks, the device. There's different devices of how to do it. Then you see on the bottle, it's PA rating, PA four plus. So we got the SPF, UVA coverage, is mentioned in the PA rating on these Korean sunscreens. Now the PA rating is from the Japanese cosmetic system and it is to give just a relative broad overview of how much UVA coverage you're getting. So the higher the pluses you see after the PA, the better the UVA coverage you are getting. And uh, they're looking at how much UVA are they shining onto your skin before you get, you get tanned. And this is very this is not consistent too because we all tan at different rates and some of us don't even tan so it's a very inconsistent test and you as a consumer and a skincare product user you just want to look at just the amount of pluses after it more the more pa pluses theoretically the better uva coverage which is covering for aging and tanning um, because it was, we what I talked about UVA is used in tanning boots. Going back to the PA system, each PA uh, designation has its own factor, multiplying factor. Well, if you have a PA of three plus, that is a factor of eight. So factor of eight means that if you're looking at the time to tan without sunscreen, take that, multiply it by eight, that comes out to what a PA three plus will give you in protection if you use it correctly okay so that's how you are to look at it um, theoretical wise but again always reapply every two hours regardless of spf and the amount of pa ratings i think it's more of just a way to just for the consumer to know how much uva coverage are you getting by looking at the four or the pa um, four plus versus you know or less that's how i will look at it too and that whole process of reading how much energy of UVA do you need uh, to cause a tan or darkening of your skin is called PPD, persistent pigment darkening. Thank you guys for um, entering that giveaway. I'm having a good time meeting uh, some new faces here. And thanks for watching my videos. Hope to do some best of 2020 videos soon, talking about my best sunscreens, serums, cleansers of 2020. And so hope you guys have a nice holiday season. Now, please like the video, please share and subscribe. Take care. Peace.